I think the Tea Party is the most exciting political development in decades. We're going to restore constitutional rights in America. We are the adults in the room when it comes to dealing with our budget. That's the Tea Party. And while we're talking about leadership, isn't it high time we retire John Boehner? A lot of passion there at the Tea Party's fifth birthday party this week. We're back with the round table right now. So Cokie Roberts, Tea Party turns five uh, this week. You heard that call for John Boehner to go. They have not been successful in that. And John Boehner, in some ways, I think is stronger than he's been uh, he, because because Congressman Kinzinger and I were talking about this, the government shutdown did affect the Tea Party. They understood that this was not working for them. But they had a, a five-year anniversary that they liked. Uh, and I would look closely at what happens in the primaries coming up to see what their strength is. Well, that's what I want to talk about. It does appear that, you know, there are a lot of Republican primaries. And the most recent, the next one coming up is Texas uh, on Tuesday. And it does appear, Rich Lowry, that in some ways, establishment Republicans would say the party is learning its lesson, that the establishment Republicans showing great strength against Tea Party challengers this time around. Well, yeah, I, I think probably the, the incumbent who has the most to fear is Thad Cochran down in uh, Mississippi, a longtime appropriator, big spending Republican, has a very smooth talking Tea Party uh, candidate who is a state senator down there to worry about. But a lot of these uh, Tea Party challengers have had rough weeks or two. You know, down there in um, Mississippi, Chris McDaniel, the challenger, got uh, wrapped around the axle on whether, whether he supported Katrina funding or not. You've had Matt Bevan, Tea Party challenger, to Mitch McConnell get wrapped around the axle about whether he supported TARP, TARP or not. And <laughs> opposition to TARP was one of the you know, key pillars of his campaign. So, so far, these, these incumbents are looking pretty safe. Except in the House. And that's where you have to look at it. And uh, Texas has a big primary coming up this week. And, uh, and these are safe Republican districts that are empty, where the people have resigned. And so then when you have as a Republican against a Republican, and in those situations, you tend to have the more conservative Republican And, and what win. difference is that going to make in the House, Congressman Kinzinger? Because it does appear, as Cokie was saying, that you know the Tea Party had their, they wanted a confrontation over the government shutdown. They seem to have lost that. And that seems to have liberated John Boehner and other Republicans to say no more to the Tea Party. Yeah, look, I think 2013 was probably just a low point in terms of House politics in general. Let's keep in mind, this isn't just Republicans doing this. I mean, a lot of times Democrats will refuse to engage with us on anything. But uh, the Tea Party brought and brings a lot of energy to the Republican Party. But I think where the difference is, is the idea of tactics. So, you know, it's a very monolithic party. We believe the debt's too high, too much unemployment, smaller government etc. The question is, as a minority position in government, do you shut down the government and compel the other side to action? And when we tried that, I think the American people and even our base saw, okay, the, the shutdown idea is not going to work. And I think it's put, if you look at what we've done even in the first couple months this year, we've achieved a lot of things that may not have made a ton of news from Farm Bill and a budget deal and everything else. And I think we're on a much better path today. And a clean path then, Van Jones, for the midterms. And to pick up on what Rich Lowry uh, was talking about right there, it does appear that for the most part in these key Senate races, and the Senate control is up for grabs uh, in November, that the uh, Republican nominees will not be as easy targets as they were yeah. in 2010 or yeah. 2012. Darn. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, in, in fact, that does, first, let me just give President Obama a little bit of credit. Uh, when he stood up to the Tea Party and said, listen, we're just not going to do this, he helped to defang the Tea Party, which actually, I think, helped the Republicans. It definitely helped Boehner. Boehner is in a stronger position now because Obama refused to go along with the nonsense in the fall. I think that's probably good for the Republican Party. I think from our point of view, I still don't think the Republican Party looks like a party that's ready, ready to govern. Uh, people want to narrow it down to the Tea Party. This is not just a Tea Party problem. This is a Republican Party problem. They look like the party of obstruction, the party of no, and the party of pain. But they also look but like they... a party that's going to pick up a lot of seats in the well, Senate, well, don't they? I, I, listen, <laughs> yes. I, we, I, we have been banking on them making dumb mistakes. And I've been telling Democrats for a long time, just because the other guy is dumb doesn't make you a genius. The... Uh, they are learning, but I still think that when you look at the, uh, at the overall positions that they take, the Republican Party positions are unpopular on minimum wage, unpopular on unemployment, unpopular on um, a number of issues. I think Democrats Look, have a shot. The only way they don't take the Senate is if they if they do screw up with the nominees and they say things like legitimate rape. But I, they're working very hard to keep their nominees from doing that. And <laughs> if, the if the Democrats <laughs> the get out. 
the presidential year voters. And that's a very difficult thing very to hard do, to do. In an off year. You know, the, obviously the Republicans have had some weak Senate candidates <laughs> over the last couple cycles, but they've also had some very strong ones. And this new generation of conservatives who were brought into the Senate because of the Tea Party, Marco Rubio, Rand Paul, Mike Lee, Ted Cruz, these are people who have an impact for decades. Yeah. And I want to half or maybe quarter, one-fifth agree with Van, I don't know how to calibrate it, but <laughs> Obstruction was very important to stopping the Obama aggrandizement of the state. But a positive agenda in this new phase is really important as well. And that's where I think the most valuable player on the Tea Party right is Mike Lee, who recognizes the party has to be bold, but it has to be constructive and positive. I want to get to who may be the most valuable player on the Democratic side this time around. We saw Bill Clinton this right. week going out and campaigning for Allison London Grimes. She's running against Mitch McConnell, uh, the Republican leader of the Senate right there. And, Koki, I want to bring this to you. It does appear that he is going to be a much more popular in Kentucky, in Arkansas, in North Carolina than Barack Obama, who likely won't go there in campaign. No, I don't think they want him in the, the Democrats don't want him in the states. And, and he's fine with that. I mean, presidents understand that. George oh, Bush was in the same position. But uh, Bill Clinton must be in ecstasy because, you know, Al Gore would not let him campaign for him in 2000. And Clinton was just chafing at the bit. And now he's the most popular guy in the Democratic Party. He's I mean, the most this popular is... guy in American politics. <laughs> the problem is he's not yeah. president. <laughs> <laughs> who's president, his approval rating nationally, low 40s, right. and then you go into the red states to the key battleground in the Senate, and he's even lower than that. And so it's always, the amazing, thing is, thing it's always amazing to me that, um, you know, you look at George W. Bush, you look at George H. W. Bush, they get out of public life, and they go away and be statesmen, and look, you know, I, I think Bill Clinton's probably a great guy, he's a great uh, campaigner, but it's always interesting to see the dichotomy and the difference. The Democrats need Bill Clinton to be effective, because uh, President Obama just isn't going to be, and I think, you know, he, well, first he's well, raising money and money. I, I can't let that one go. You, you, you have five seconds. Okay. Uh, I, I don't think George W. Bush going away uh, painting pictures of being a statesman. I think Bill Clinton on the oh, world stage. On. The, Bill, Clinton, Bill Clinton has been on the world they, stage. Now you've gone too far. Are you attacking? Are you attacking? Bill Clinton has done a lot Are you attacking George Bush's anybody? paintings van? <laughs> <laughs> they're all they're all doing good things. I, uh, the ex-presidents are doing. I know good. it wouldn't be that easy to get out of it.